So I have this idea for an invention. Fake tits. Except they're not really tits, they're whoopee cushions so that every time you squeeze them they fart out of the nipples like air valves. Now what does that have to do with this video? Not a goddamn thing. Other than my idea might be more fun to play with, but this is Harry's Legend, and I talked about this in passing in my Super New Year Kart 15-in-1 video. But in a nutshell, the history behind this magical mess is that a group called the Hummer Team released an unlicensed NES game called Titanic. Yes, it's really misspelled like that. And then later, that was further modified into Harry's Legend. That's basically the gist of this intro. At least I kept it short this time. Oh, what's that? You click this video and expected quality commentary? And too bad, you get this shit instead. <coughs> Alright, let's get started. One good thing is that you can play all the levels in any order without needing to beat anything. So if you're like me and have little to no patience or quality of perseverance or decent level of skill or competence in general, you can still see the whole game. So we're getting a cutscene, and that's pretty nice pixel art too, to be fair. A breeze ruffled- I wasn't- Finished! Oh, whatever. Actually, this is written kind of... Uh... Hang on a second. This text is... One small hard? Jesus Christ, guys. How hard is it to copy some text from a book verbatim? Yeah, they really did that. That's... An odd design choice. Usually we just summarize the plot. Although, to be fair, this was a Chinese pirate group, so if none of them were fluent in English... Uh, yeah, I guess rewriting and condensing part of a story from an unfamiliar language would be asking a lot. And I'm monolingual myself, but still, why copy this paragraph specifically? It's referencing Harry as a one-year-old, and I already know at least we're playing as Harry when he's a kid and not a baby. I don't know, but at least we get to see the Dursley household, unlike in the PC port of the Sorcerer's Stone. So, any time now. Alright, here we are. I made this comment earlier when I glanced at this game during the Super New Year Kart video, but it's worth repeating. One of the most unrealistic things about this entire game is the fact that we're inside the Dursley household, and that there would be rats and bats just casually hanging around while Aunt Petunia is in charge of keeping the place clean. That, and Skinny Harry just casually kicking the shit out of Dudley so hard that he's flying back like ten feet. So that's already two ways this game fucked up the plot. Damn. D damn! What? What? Why the fuck can I not kick this rat in the face now? Should it shouldn't be that difficult. I didn't have any trouble with the other enemies before then. Yeah, just an electronic sliding door with a keypad going into another room of a residential house. Nothing weird about that, and Dudley recovered fast. You know what would have made the plot of this level make more sense? If Harry was fighting the Dursley family to get one of the Hogwarts acceptance letters that they were trying to keep away from him, that would have been kinda cool. Although if you beat the level, then that negates Hagrid needing to tell him a couple of things, but... Eh, that, or anything really. Would have been better than Harry just mindlessly stomping rats and kicking his uncle in the balls. There's a flickering lobster or something just floating on the second floor railing up there. I'm guessing they just reused that from the Titanic rather than make a new sprite that would make more sense in the context of the Harry Potter universe, like Chocolate Frog? Although I know myself well enough that if I saw a Chocolate Frog in this household, I'd criticize them for yet another plot inconsistency, so... It's like they can't win. Maybe that means they should stop trying. Oh shit, I died. Damn it. Now I have to play through this whole part of the level again. I've played this once or twice over the last several months, so I have a rough idea of what to expect and how stuff works, so... I know that the lobster replenishes your health, and I practically touched it after I died too. I was so close. It's kind of annoying that your head just hits the ceiling when you want to jump, which makes jumping around on the second floor very restrictive, but look at Dudley, he can jump partway through the ceiling without any trouble. Now how is that fair? How does he even jump that high anyways? I mean, this is Dudley we're talking about. Okay, Harry killed his cousin for like the third time. Now what? Oh look, it's the boss. 
Yay. I guess he's not smart enough to chase me up the stairs. What the fuck was that? This freak jumped from the first floor, his head overlapped with my feet as I was standing on the second floor, and that hurt me? Bull fucking shit. God damn it. Uh, so... Uh, admittedly, it took me a little while to realize this the first time I was playing, but... What do you notice about this boss? Well, he's colored in purple, he keeps moonwalking backwards into me a lot of the time, and his head looks weird. Like there's two faces on either side of it. Is this seriously supposed to be Professor Quirrell and Voldemort? There's so many things wrong with that that it's not even funny. Well, actually, it is kind of funny. But you know what I mean. I probably can't think of all the ways that this revelation breaks the plot, though. I swear, it's not really that difficult to defeat him. It just takes fucking forever. Also, if I'm kicking Quirrell in the ass, then from Voldemort's point of view, it looks like I'm kicking him from where his crotch would have been, I guess. Oh, good. Finally. Alright, here's the intro for Stage 2, so we're going to the Shack on the Rock now. Although the pixel art sure doesn't match what that description would have you imagine. This looks like an area of the Orange Islands from the Pokémon anime, and I said earlier that it would be cool if they made the plot on Stage 1 something along the lines of Harry fighting for his letter, and this bit of text that they took from the book for the Stage 2 intro does mention mail seemingly not being able to be delivered here, so they almost could have done that. Almost. They were so close, but oh well. We're just describing the interior of the shack now, which we never see the inside of anyways. And maybe not even the outside of it either, who knows. There's multiple buildings in the background of this level anyway, so it's impossible to know which one is the one Uncle Vernon arranged to move into. I wish these cutscenes would move a little faster, to be honest. So the level starts, and right away you get into a fight with some asshole. I don't know who this blonde guy is supposed to be. Did he seriously get himself stuck up there? Well, stuck isn't the right word, but the game is trying to attack me without realizing I'm not even on the same vertical level as the enemy sprite it's controlling. I can't kick the fish either. Ugh. Come on, get the fuck down from there. Really? Okay, whatever. That's my own fault, I suppose. I think I can do the same to him. Should be able to. Good. Alright. Oh yeah, I remember now. There's a bunch of doors you can't go in. Are you fucking kidding me right now? And I have to fight this blonde asshole again. I don't even know who he is. I mean, Dudley's blonde, but not at all that thin. It's not Uncle Vernon or Aunt Petunia. It sure as fuck not Hagrid. Maybe it's supposed to be Draco since he's also a blonde antagonist, but he doesn't show up yet in this part of the story, so I have no idea. Alright, I made my way over the rat this time so I don't get knocked backwards. Just ease my way forward so I can make the jump. Oh my god. I mean... Fuck. I mean, look, he does look like Draco. I seriously fell off the side again. Okay, well that worked well enough. Whatever. <sighs> I'm not sure what the point of the continue screen is, but I can opt to start the stage from the main menu. Ugh. Okay, I'm getting fucking reckless now. I need to just... Fuck! What? Why does that fish have to be there? It's jumping out of the ground rather than the water between the land anyways. I'm gonna try this strategy again. <laughs> Shit, fuck. I've had it. I was gonna try to refrain from doing this for the most part, but I'm just gonna start using the extra buttons on this controller that I mapped to be turbo buttons, so I can kick repeatedly as fast as possible. And he went up there and got himself stuck again. Fine. Just fine. There's a fucking octopus just strolling along now, and it 
killed itself. Okay. At least I've made it further into the level, though. A level that looks more like a whole village rather than one shack on a rock. Honestly, you could make an argument that this area more closely resembles Diagon Alley of all places. Did I say Diagon Alley? Whatever. Wow, I can't believe I made that jump, though. That's good for me. Ah, shit. Why is that one mouse green anyways? Damn it. I just want to jump over the goddamn rodent. Finally. Oh look, Draco's back. You know, I would have been perfectly happy to live the rest of my life thinking that the Goblet of Fire was the worst Harry Potter game out there. Although I still haven't gotten around to the two Deathly Hallows games, but no. This has to inconvenience me by just being here. Sure, it's my fault for choosing to play it, but it's this game's fault for existing at all, so it kinda evens out, and Quirrell just jumps out of nowhere. I actually noticed that the screen had stopped scrolling earlier. I guess this is the last island on the side of the screen doubles as a physical wall in the game's world. I have an idea, though. just want to see if I can kick this fuckwad off an island and into the water. He's following me so far. Okay, here we go. I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. Motherfucker's beating me back to the right, though. But I'm, I'm close enough. I might be able to kick him the rest of the way back to the left. Oh, come on. I'm so close. Shit. Just a bit further. Oh, fuck. He might... He might kick me into the ocean if I'm not careful. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. I think my voice cracked, though. Ah, uh, yes. Stage 3 is in Gringotts. You know what would be cool? If we could ride in a high-speed cart underground or something. Also, I notice that the audio is somehow a little off, like it's... I'm hearing more clicking than normal for an NES game. I don't know if it's a couple of sound channels that are overlapping in a weird way or what. It's a pretty minor thing, to be fair, but it's something else I've noticed a few times while playing this. <sighs> so not only am I disappointed that we can't ride a cart, but apparently Dudley found his way down here too. I don't know who else it's supposed to be. Certainly not a goblin. Come on, he should be dead already. This is fucking ridiculous. He must have bones of steel under all that fat. Yep, here comes Dudley again. Did it really just take him five seconds to remember that he has to jump over that ledge? Shit. Well, at least Harry can take quite a few hits himself, so it's not like I can say this is too unbalanced. I made it this far, after all, and finally killed the bastard, too, only to get hit again by... purple... fire? You know, the way this game scrolls sideways, particularly the right-hand side of the screen, is really jarring and glitchy-looking. It's not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but still certainly noticeable, and it's not like it's a limitation of the NES since most other games had smoother scrolling. Oh cool, a lobster. I actually needed that. Thank you very much. There's that clicking noise again. I probably shouldn't complain since it worked out in my favor. But how the fuck did I successfully kick that bat from so far away? Now watch how many kicks it takes to kill a random guy. He needed to be kicked in the face 18 times in a row before he fucked off. Okay, the screen stopped scrolling. I guess Quirrell is afraid of rats, so I need to do him a favor and take care of this for him so that he feels safe enough to come out and kill me. That motherfucker. Why is he down here anyways? I mean, I guess they're going for Vault 713, and that's a race against time, but now Harry has to kick their ass again to protect the stone, instead of Hagrid or any of the goblins or security features of Gringotts. Yeah, there's no point in continuing to even question what's going on right now. Or what's supposed to be going on right now. What's going on right now is that I'm getting my ass kicked. Shit! Now I have to play through the whole level again. That's one of the biggest flaws with this game's design. It's the fact that when you get hit, you fall over for a second before getting back up but then you can get hit immediately after getting back up, and you can lose multiple health points in a row if you get caught between two barriers with an enemy running around in between them. Or if Coral is a little too hopped up on some kind of upper. 
If you had what a lot of other games had, where you don't fall over but instead you're invincible for a couple of seconds, you'd have a much better chance of killing that enemy so that you're not caught in an unfair loop like this. There's nothing inherently wrong with trying different things and all that, but at least consider if your design choice makes sense or not, and try testing it out for yourself, and if you're like, wow, that's bullshit that one enemy drained my health bar because I couldn't regain control of my character, then fucking do something about it. You're a pirate group, for God's sake. If you're going to copy anything when making a game, then at least copy the conventional wisdom of tried-and-true examples of side-scrolling games like Super Mario Bros. By the way, he's never on a broomstick in this game. Because of course not. I mean, technically you're invincible for a couple of seconds while you're laying on the ground, but what good does that do if you can't counterattack from that position? Anyways, I make my way back through level 3 again. Nothing particularly noteworthy happens other than you can just walk past the purple fire and it doesn't really try very hard to chase you. So I made it back to the end of the level again, and right before Quirrell came out I decided to kick the last rat before I went for the green guy again, but the green guy just disappears and Quirrell comes out unexpectedly. So I wasted time kicking that green guy in the face last time around. What did I say earlier? The green guy needed 18 kicks in order to be finished off, right? Well, Quirrell needs to be kicked 24 times before he's defeated, which isn't really that many more attacks that are needed. I mean, granted, it's more difficult in Quirrell's case since he jumps around so erratically, but my main gripe with this whole comparison is that the other human enemies shouldn't take almost as many kicks to defeat as the actual boss. I mean, come on, honestly. I could understand maybe three or five kicks for a human enemy since they're larger than rats, bats, and snakes. Why not just do that? Do we really need the equivalent of two or three mini-bosses per level? This gets tedious after a while. You know, the walls look like they're made of gold. Yeah, I know, it's supposed to be stone, but I think they overestimated how far-reaching the light from a torch is. I should know, I've played Minecraft. You need a bunch of them sometimes. How much fucking longer is this going to take? Uh, oh. Okay, I thought the game froze for a second. Alright, here's stage four. Good pixel art once again, but it's weird how we're starting the fourth out of a total of five stages in this game, and yet we still haven't even made it to Hogwarts yet. Talk about bad pacing. And of course, it still copies text from the book verbatim and takes forever to do so, but at least you can skip this whole thing by pressing start if you wanted to. Apparently, the interior of the Hogwarts Express is double-decker now, and quite luxurious too, I might add. They must have used that magic that lets you expand the interior space of an object so that the volume inside exceeds the space it takes up outside. Whatever that charm is called, that's a fucking dead end. And they have a whole fireplace in here. On a large bed, too. It's cool that you can bounce on it, though. Can't kick the purple fire, which I guess shouldn't surprise me, but it's annoying that I have to walk through it without Snape's potions. Now... Okay, look. At this point, I'd be willing to accept that this blonde guy is supposed to be Draco. We encounter him on the train in the book, after all, but... We already saw this guy in stage two on that shack, or village, or whatever, on the rock in the ocean, so like... Nope. Can't do it. Can't say that that was really Draco after all. You blew it. The fact that you have beds and couches in here and that they took time and effort to let you have fun and bounce on it like an inflatable bouncy castle is really funny to me. I don't think it does anything useful, but it's not hurting anything and it's mildly amusing. Okay, um, the reason I'm fucking around at the moment is because that chandelier's a trap. It looks different from the others, and unlike the others, it falls on you. So you just gotta fake it out. Carefully. Damn it! Well, so much for all that mental preparation. What the fuck even hit me? That definitely deserves an instant replay. I'm standing on this cabinet, which is clearly taller than the pink enemy or the snake by a fair amount, and Harry recoils like something horrible happened. 
Maybe the pink guy farted for all I know. But his hitbox shouldn't be that high unless you animate the sprite to raise his arm high enough above his head or something like that. At least I successfully avoided that chandelier. Now I'm at the end of this screen and, once again, can't go through that door to bypass kicking this guy's ass a second time. It's kind of confusing since there is an occasional door that you have to go through, though I think those are usually sliding doors, so maybe I'm supposed to just know that that's the only functional kind of entrance and exit as far as I, the player, am concerned. This is kind of annoying because I have to kick this guy several more times, but the screen won't scroll any further, so I'm sure Quirrell's gonna jump out of that door immediately after I finish the screen guy off. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Why didn't I move out of the way, though? Oh, it doesn't matter, my health bar is practically drained anyways. One thing I'm doing differently this time around is I'm going to get that coke later when my health is lower, because it'd be a waste to use it right now. Man, look at the clock on the fireplace mantle, even that's animated. As much as this game sucks overall, you have to admire their attention to detail, even though it's rather... selectively applied. By the way, I had another thought about how in this game they must have expanded the interior volume of the Hogwarts Express in order to get ceiling so high that you have a bit of time to react to falling chandeliers. Why not do that in the real Hogwarts Express? You have one thin corridor on one side, and then compartments along it that hold maybe half a dozen people or so each. Okay, so we just skipped an enemy sprite and went straight from knockoff Draco to Quirrell. I don't understand that inconsistency. Oh god, he's gonna knock me into that Coke bottle. Okay, how did I miss that? That was lucky. I'm actually doing better this time. I might not even need the power-up now at the rate I'm going. But anyways, that'd be pretty funny if the Hummer team found a way to improve one tiny aspect of the Harry Potter universe by accident by expanding each Hogwarts Express compartment into the size of a luxury house. But seriously, has anyone else never thought of that? I don't know. You fucking die already, you two-faced shit! I didn't mean to jump into that power-up, but I guess I kind of needed it then. Finally! It's about time he died for, like, the fourth time already. Hey, here's a fun bonus scene for you. I played through this level again because I wasn't sure if there was a glitch that happened near the end of the level. It turns out it wasn't a glitch or anything worth commenting on, but in the process I found out that this guy can be really passive sometimes. He barely wants to fight me at all. I mean, he'll still hit you occasionally, maybe he waits for you to strike first sometimes. I don't know. Well, he hit me a few more times, then he went like 34 seconds straight without hitting me at all. He just keeps jumping around. I just... I really don't get it. Does the game behave a little differently every time you start it up? Like, the enemy difficulty is randomized somewhat, or... Did I really make this whole playthrough a lot harder than it needed to be? Yeah, it's like, for the most part he attacks you if you strike first. There's actually a deep moral lesson you could take away from this, about the cycle of violence, how most violence stems as a reaction from prior violence, or it might just be bad programming, we'll never know. Alright, fifth and final stage, and we're just now arriving at the castle. Oh well, I did enjoy the pixel artwork though. That's really the one bright spot of this whole disaster. How the hell were these guys so good at that one thing, and yet they fucked everything else up so horribly? So we're quoting a part of the book now that details getting off the Hogwarts Express as we've arrived at the castle. That's probably the most relevant quoted passage yet, although... Admittedly, I didn't pay super close attention to some of the others, I just wish it were summarized rather than plagiarized. So I guess you never met Ron or Hermione at any point in that train ride? Huh? So the first time I encountered this level, I had no idea what was going on. But if you watch it for long enough, you'll realize that getting hit by the ball doesn't take away any health points, but letting the ball go into my goal area does. 
but what you're seeing now isn't the first time I ever played this level. Instead, during this particular playthrough, the ball just kept resetting itself on the same trajectory that would take it into the opponent's goal area. It's pretty lucky, I guess, but you know what that means? Yeah, I feel like I gotta play this all over again to show off what a typical experience at this part of the game is like where the ball doesn't have mercy on me. Lucky my ass. Okay, so here's a recording of a separate attempt at this... game. I guess I can't call it a mini-game since you have to play it in order to progress. I mean, at least it's a bit of variety in gameplay, I suppose, but... It's still weird. Who am I playing against, and why? Out of all the times you could have used the sprite that vaguely resembles Draco, now would have been a great time. Instead of next to the fucking shack out at sea, Meanwhile, I found out that you can jump into your goal area, which I guess would make sense for defense purposes, but I'm not sure why my AI opponent isn't capable of doing that. So who's the other ghost up there? Is he officiating the match? If so, he has his back turned away half the time and he interferes with the game semi-regularly by letting the ball bounce off of him. Aw, oh, shit. Fell on my ass. Uh, come to think of it, I'm not sure when the ball bounces off of you versus when it passes through your body. I never figured out a pattern for that. Anyways, maybe the ghost up there is Peeve since he's interfering, although I doubt you'd find him holding a book very often, and aesthetically, he looks too refined to be a poltergeist. I think I'm getting the hang of this, though. It's just... Oh, well look, once again, it looks like I found a spot to stand where I can just stand still and not do... anything. Now what the fuck is Harry doing? Just hogging the ball? That's an interesting glitch. Also, sometimes the ball seems to get stuck bouncing around in one half of the arena, which is pretty annoying. Especially if it's the opponent's half and he can't figure out how to do anything else for half a minute. I don't think that really happened in this recording either, but still, it's... It's happened a couple of times before. What's the point of this anyways? It's not... It's not a quaffle, whatever this is. It, oh, look. Once again, I managed to always have the ball go into the other goal area by just standing still. I have to keep jumping around to break that combo just to see what other weird shit might happen. For fuck's sake. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. I don't know how exactly the game decides when the ball can go through you, or bounce off of your head or body. Well, that's enough of this part of the game, I guess. I don't know what kind of sense it makes that I get hurt when the ball goes into my goal area, but I guess we can just say, it's magic, and leave it at that. Couldn't I just have a separate score counter instead of getting hurt and deducting health? What if they tried to recreate Quidditch in this game? Would the losing team all just fall over and die whenever the winning team's seeker grabs the snitch? Yeah, that's totally what they would do. And yes, I'm fighting a life-sized queen piece from a chess set now. I mean, okay, that's something that appears in the book and movie, and it's an obstacle, and I'm basically kicking around a statue and can apparently still hurt it somehow, but after everything else I've seen, I don't feel like I can really complain. This is out of place, but it's not as out of place as pretty much anything else in this game, since at least it's in the castle, if you consider that long underground labyrinth underneath Hogwarts where Ron takes charge of the chess match is still part of the castle anyways, so... whatever. Sure takes a while to kick the shit out of it, though. Come on! Fucking finally. Oh, and they updated the grandfather clock, too, so it doesn't look like a large, meaty phallus swinging around like in the original Titanic game that this is based off of. It still moves when you pause the game, though, but the pause screen has owls with flickering eyes, which is actually kind of cool. So I'll give them a point for that little feature, because I thought that was a charming bit of attention to detail. Which brings this game up to a score of, like, negative 169 points now. At this point, there's little to show you that you haven't already seen elsewhere in the game, although I didn't notice that this chandelier was colored a bit differently to indicate that it was a sprite that would fall on me, so... That sucked. Yeah, I'm just strolling along when, oh shit, there's another queen piece. I thought I took care of that already. Wait, now there's two at once? Fuck off. 
you know what, at this point, I'm just not even gonna try. I'm just gonna stand here and hold down the turbo button until I kick them enough times to bring Quirrell out of whatever hole he's hiding in. I just want this to be over with. Where's Ron when you need him? Or Hermione, for that matter. All I get are the Dursleys, Draco, and the two-faced shit Quirrell and Voldemort. All people who want me dead. Oh, and maybe Peter Pettigrew, too, if he was one of the rats scurrying about that was trying to kill me as well. Even with the turbo button, kicking two of these at once still feels exhausting because of how tedious it is. Or at least that's one down. Surely the other will die soon. Please? Just die already? Oh, come on. Finally! Yeah, I'm still just gonna hold down the turbo button down. I, I, I don't even care. And honestly, you shouldn't either. He's not any more difficult, and you've seen me kick his ass before. Okay, so I won. I don't see how, though. Quirrell and Voldemort kept coming back so far, so... Why should they be permanently dead this time? The winning screen looks pretty cool, though. I know I keep mentioning this, but it really is odd how the graphics can look pretty decent, but every other aspect of this game is either mundane uh, or absurdly ridiculous. I mean, first of all, I beat the whole game in a little less than a half hour. And that's despite dying two or three times and losing a bit of progress on the way. There are definitely moments that are more frustrating than others, but on the whole, I'd say that this is rather easy to pick up and play. But just because it's easy doesn't correlate with being any more fun or satisfying to work through. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that this is borrowing from the plot of Harry Potter and fucking up the story in the process, then this would be relatively unremarkable and I probably wouldn't have given it a second thought or even considered doing a video on it. It's not the worst game ever viewed on this channel, but it's the worst Harry Potter game ever viewed. At least I think it is, my memory is a bit fuzzy on all the different objections I had to the PC port of the Goblet of Fire. At least in this game you can jump, but you can't... cast spells. Wait, why is it now just occurring to me that I played a Harry Potter game where you never use magic? I mean, I already know that the story for this adaptation of the book ended super prematurely, but holy shit... Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's over. And I'm done with it. But, on the other hand, if I'm being honest, I can't wait for the sequel. Harry's Fable, which tells the story of a boy who lost his pet snake Hedwig in the school sewers for a whole year before he's finally able to get Professor Lovegood to do a spell that'll flush him down a toilet to reach the Chamber of Requirements deep below the school. Only to find that the snake was getting high off of smoking gillyweed the whole time. So it's executed for smoking the devil's lettuce and Harry wins the House Cup sponsored by Dare, for standing up to drugs. And then Draco gets mad and shits his pants, and that's the story. I don't know if it'd be any more faithful to the plot of the Chamber of Secrets than Perry's legend was to the Sorcerer's Stone or not, but I'd totally play that. That's pretty much it for this video. There's more stuff on the way at some point. Hopefully there's not another fucking year-long gap between this and whatever comes next, though, but I still keep coming up with ideas for stuff, honestly, but, uh, yeah, see you later, and hopefully soon.